Sometimes as an instructor you are asked to teach subjects you are not completely familiar with. In this series we plan to seek out masters in those areas and find out the best methods not only for starting students off, but the best pathways for you to explore as a teacher. Today, I'm not a metal guy. Alright. Steve. Hello. Hello. Greetings. Yes. Uh, I am not a metal guy. Oh. Oh, you're not, eh? I am not. I am not. Um, I know a thing or two. Good, good. Uh, so, tell us about metal. Uh, it's not an easy thing to define. So, I guess the easiest way it, I define it as in, in my brain is like I think of the the peak of what the music can go to. So, like anything can be soft under the range, but then like you know, hard rock can only peak up to here, but mm -hmm. then metal peaks up here. It's and okay. nothing else reaches that peak, but okay. it can still have everything beneath it. But it hits that peak, so that's kind of what I define metal as. Okay. It reaches a certain level of aggression. Okay, I've agreed. That's what you're talking about, about peaking. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. You're like. I've heard non-metal bands make like a metal album, like Porcupine Tree. They yeah. had that one album from like 2005, which is all like totally metal, but all their other albums are nothing like that. Right, right. So, like, does that make them a metal band, or do they just put out a metal album? Or is it just metal because it reached that aggression level? Right. Or that sound? So, I guess that's how I kind of defined it anyways to me. Yeah. Why metal? What got you into metal? What do you like about metal? I don't know, man. There's just something about the sound of a crunchy guitar. It just gets you going. It's energy level, I think, because, I don't know. Because like, you're, I mean, like, you're a, you're a metal guy from way back. It's not like, like... Oh, yeah, years, that's always like, what I was... It's not like two years ago, you're like, hmm, I like this heavier style of Where music. did this come from? Right. No, yeah. no, I mean, I guess I was... <laughs> it's not genetic, but I guess the first CD and albums I had was Rust in Peace and Ride the Lightning. So okay. I've mm -hmm. always... And that was four, four or five when I got those. Okay. <laughs> so I was pretty young, so that's all I listened to. Who got you into metal, then? I guess just like people. how do you end up with, like I think when I was four and five I had like I don't know the, uh, I'll the tell Sesame you how. Street records and I, the... I know exactly how because I was playing Doom and I loved all the songs in Doom and a lot of them were okay. based off of real songs from Megadeth and Metallica and one of my neighbors was a little bit older than me mm -hmm. and he knew that and started actually showing me the music and so okay. I guess that's kind of how I got introduced to it but. I don't know, I guess it also like fits the energy level I have, because when I think of like, you know, just something happens and I'm excited and the energy's pumping, I don't I don't feel like a heavy rap song is a thing to let it out with. I need to shake my head and just feel a crunchy guitar and okay. get get it out. It just feels the right way to get that out, and that the only way and it fits the genre of metal. So like I said, I'm not a metal guy. Right. What, what do I need to know to be able to teach metal? What do I need to know to be able to perform metal and what's the difference between the two? If there's one aspect I could say that people need to know about when they're playing metal is just hit the drums. Okay. Hit them hard. Okay. You can hit them. A lot of people are... I know when you're new, you know, you don't exactly have to play and you have a, you know, there's a bit of anxiety about it and you don't want to just wail on them, but I see people who clearly know how to play, but they put videos on YouTube and they're playing against to metal songs, but they're barely playing the song. Mm -hmm. They hit the drums right. loud, hard, aggressively. That's the style of music. So that it, ties back into the aggression you were talking about, the aggression level, right? It's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, I guess yeah so. because I mean, you think of like uh, even if it's a simple beat, it's they're not playing that simple beat just you know, <laughs> wailing like this on the drums. At least if you watch the people who are actually playing it live, because mm -hmm. it's. That's what it's meant to be. So if I'd say, yeah, one thing you need to know about metal is don't be afraid to hit as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. It's okay. In fact, <laughs> that's encouraged, heavily encouraged. What should I be listening to? What's a good, you know, primer for listening to metal? You gotta start with, uh, I focused too much on double pedal and I had to go back and fix my single, my right foot. Okay. So you might as well not screw it up from the get-go like I did. And uh, listen to some faith no more. That's the one. You got it. Okay. Because um, Mike Borden, the this. doubles was like yeah. the biggest thing that da -da 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 doing a lot of stuff. Was like, yeah, was right. I was falling down on. Yeah. Which is embarrassing because if I can do double bass really fast, <laughs> I should be able to do some quick doubles. Right. So and there's a lot of songs where he does that stuff on, like everything was ruined on the Angel Dust album. That was probably <laughs> one of the songs I recommend. It's got Tom beats in there, mm -hmm. so you got that. A lot of the. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So you can really get that lot of lot of the doubles going on on the right foot and build up your right foot strength. What else? Um, I, don't know, I always think Megadeth. Is just, I love playing along with Megadeth. It's kind of my favorite. Peace Cells and Rust in Peace are two greatest because okay. you got Gar Samuelson on the one, and his style is a little different. Obviously, because the two different drummers, and then Nick Menza. There's just something about it. Nick Menza is another guy with. Uh, 
great foot patterns, like I make the song go to hell, I love that. There's one section that's a fill with double bass, but the rest of the song is just single foot, but it's, there's so many uh, different patterns he puts in the song that I think is awesome, and it yeah. just keeps changing, and it's, and it's, you don't really notice it unless you pay attention to it that, yeah, that keeps the song moving along and sounding different, even though some of the same guitar riffs are playing, because he's still playing different things on the feet. You want to get more aggressive? You can't anything with Gene Hoagland on it. Tell us about Gene Hoagland. I mean, he's a he's he's a big name, but if you're not a metal guy, you probably haven't heard of Gene Hoagland. I guess that's true. I mean, he played with Death Clock, so that's probably the biggest that's one. The, yeah. because everyone knows the Metal Metalocalypse band. Right, but, uh, right. But there's Death and Strapping and Lab was always the main one that got me into them. He's got like crazy good endurance, a lot of cool patterns on the drums and. I don't know, his power is just crazy. A lot of accents on stuff that you wouldn't expect the accents on. Just a lot of... I, I can't put it in words exactly, but he's got his style. I just... I, I love it. I think it's a really smart thing that you said you need to start with one, but, you know, as, as it's time to get that double pedal, you know, are there any records that you think would be like, start here kind of thing? Yeah, you can't go wrong with Rust in Peace, because there's a lot of double bass on there, and it's not crazy fast, like I think the fastest song on the album is like 160 beats per minute, so okay. it never breaks like on uh, all the Metallica albums where it's, uh, you know, the faster songs are around 190 or... What uh, other songs to learn? I guess there's all that you gotta go with Judas Priest Painkiller, just okay. for the straight 16 double bass mm -hmm. under the, the whole song, uh -huh. if you just gotta be able to keep that steady, if you can do that, you know, that's a... That's a major thing, just being able to keep 16 things steady while you're playing for, for an entire song. You should be able to do that. If you want to start splitting them up, yeah, I guess you could start getting into Strap Me and Land. Detox is one where you can it's doubles and then 16s that alternate back and forth. And learning endurance, too. That's, that's one of the major things I, I had to pick up on was getting endurance up there. Even just, cause man, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is there any exercises that you can suggest for that, or are there any exercises in general that, like, things to do away from playing with songs? The only thing I do, I don't have really any exercises, I just do doubles over a constant double bass to warm up. That's okay. all I do, so I'm just doing double bass, and I, you know, speed matches my hands and feet, right. and I just speed up until it go as fast as I can with my doubles and okay. feet, and then slow it down, and then keep speeding up until I feel warm enough, and that's... I think it's a good exercise. It really feels like, uh, after I do that, I feel like I can play what I need to play, you know, without having to warm up much more. What's a need-to-know groove for, for metal? Agree oh, uh, you can't go wrong. Just a uh, 16-note double bass and uh, just two and four on the snare. I mean, that's that's the basis that's, of everything. That's it. That's the basis of, like, like all metal is based off of this, you know? Pretty much. I mean, okay. all Slayer is based off of okay. that. All the fast Metallica songs. Mm -hmm. uh, other beats, so if you can play that, you can play quite a bit of metal. Okay. Yeah. I just want to say thanks for you know doing the interview and, and, and coming out and uh, telling us about being a metal guy. Absolutely. I, maybe I'm not the most metal guy, but I listen to a lot of metal. Well, you know, you're more metal guy than I am, right? Perfect. So um, check this guy out. This is Steven Yugovic. He is on uh, uh, Good Enough at Drums, right? Is that yeah. What it's called? Yeah. yeah, that's my name. We'll, we'll, we'll link it. We'll put it here next to me or him or maybe we'll link these. It's 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 they're just it's, yeah. they're just good enough videos, yeah. you know. Yeah. What? Well, oh. Maybe throw this in the video. Okay. It's okay to be lazy while drumming. Okay. I should, uh... Elaborate. So, you know, a lot of people want to try and get this, like if you're doing blast beats, mm -hmm. do them the easiest way possible. Just do tiny, super slow 16th notes on your feet, just so you can go and then just double up your hands. It's way easier than trying to keep your right foot up to the same speed with all the other. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to okay. laze it out. So. Right. It's all about, it's all about the sound you make. Yeah, like exactly. Right? Yeah. The end result, no matter how you do it. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't, I don't care how hardcore you are as long as you make music that I like, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, we'll get to some playing. Yeah. Sweet. Perfect. Should I warm up?